Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to my presentation on environmental influences on crime trends and patterns. My name is Casey Doro and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about these environmental influences. The first slide is about family dynamics. Uh, parental supervision, loving caregivers, parental offending are a few of the important pieces of fa family dynamics. Uh, family dynamics are a very powerful environmental influence for offenders. Up until about seven years old, children are directly influenced by whether or not they have loving caregivers. There is a saying that the unloved become the unloving. Basic trust, according to Eric Erickson, a sense that the world is predictable and trustworthy, said to be formed during infancy by appropriate experiences with responsive caregivers. If they don't feel like they have this basic trust, they will be deprived of a good start at healthy relationships. They will be taught to not attach to a solid love, so they will grow up detached. And as you can imagine, this can wreak havoc on a kid who is trying to find his place amongst friends or family members. If he does not have these good social skills, he can become ostracized, and the broken relationships can lead to inappropriate ways of responding to situations. If there is a parental offending, then it is likely the child will grow up to do the same. The social learning theory explains how people learn from others how to act. And if there is no good parental supervision, that child will not even learn the benefits of rewards and consequences. All of the above is a recipe for a child or adult who can become quite unstable. My second slide is a technology and social media. So the important topics for that is cyberbullying, stalking, and identity theft. Uh, the new ages of technology that brought us social media has indeed been a good and a bad thing. For the police, social media has given them unprecedented access to the public. For the offenders, it has opened doors to crimes likely, excuse me, it has opened doors to crimes like identity theft, stalking, or cyberbullying. It is easy for people to trust that a website will keep their personal information personal. In most cases, that is true. They try. However, there are criminals out there who are professional hackers and are able to easily obtain vital information that can greatly benefit them at little to no risk. With someone's personal information, a criminal can essentially pretend to be them. They can apply for credit and rack up a lot of debt. They can pretty much do anything that a regular person could do just while pretending to be someone else. Recovering from identity theft can be a vicious fight. There is a lot of cleaning up one would have to do, not to mention the feeling of being violated, just knowing that there is someone out there who knows your address, name, date of birth, and social security number. It would make you question, are they following me right now? That leads me to stalking. Stalking is made easy because of social media. People comfortably post pictures of themselves offering small and big clues into their personal lives. Checking in to locations on social media is a clear sign that you are away from home or that you frequent a certain store. It is easier for someone's life, excuse me, it is easier for offenders to sit behind a computer and learn the details of someone's life while planning some kind of plot to execute their desires, whatever those might be. Cyberbullying is another popular and huge concern with social media. People who are weak in character enough to attack another person verbally are way braver behind the screen of a computer. Children and young adult, adults are more susceptible to cyberbullying because that is what kids do. They pick on the other kids. Cyberbullying can go from teasing to a verbally horror scene, and it can have a great and lasting effect on the victim. My third slide is uh, about socioeconomic status. And that includes social standards, uh, occupation, and poverty. Social standards have such a powerful hold on society. A social problem is quite literally any situation that society deems a problem. I suppose that means the vast majority of people. So if a lot of people suddenly become offended over the designs on a Starbucks cup, then that has become an actual social problem. Who decides what life is or is not supposed to be like anyhow? Why is it that we all feel that if we do not have an education, a career, a home, and lots of lavish items, then we are not worthy? There are, of course, the basics. If we do not have a good job, then we will live in poverty. Living in poverty can be very challenging and daunting just with each day of living, not to mention the labels associated with being poor. 
People slapping labels on other people based on their jobs as social class is sad and true. The world quite literally needs wealthy people to run things and poor people to pick up the pieces. It's pathetic, it, but it's breeding grounds for offenders of all types. When someone is raised in poverty, but they listen to the world telling them that they are supposed to be this or supposed to have that, they end up feeling trapped. They begin to find ways, usually quick ways, to get what they want. In general, these quick ways are not legal or they may be dangerous. Dealing drugs or joining a gang holds the promise of economic rewards and status enhancements that the conventional world simply cannot provide. When you have a good job, you get paid enough to not have to live paycheck to paycheck. You can save for emergencies and for fun things. You may be living free of financial stress, but if you do not have a good job, you may be struggling to provide for you and your family. That creates worry and makes you feel like you are not good enough once again desiring to turn to quick fixes. You may become pushed into a corner and feel that you have no way out but to take a small risk for what you believe to be a bigger reward. For example, theft or burglary. My last slide is about education and the important uh, pieces there are quality education properly staffed and funded and parental involvement. Quality education is vital to the success of students. If students are not measuring up at the rest of society, then they will feel oppressed and forced to drop out or to work a low-paying job. Forget being able to get into a good college. Quality education can be delivered when a school is properly staffed and funded. If it is not properly staffed and funded, then the children suffer and ultimately so does society. They are more likely to succeed with the appropriate resources, but without that, they will likely fail. They will feel like they are stupid, less than, and might turn to things that make them feel better, perhaps drugs or petty crimes. Another contributing factor is parental involvement. It is imperative that parents remain involved in their children's schooling. The education portion is not the only part that kids will benefit from, but also the relationships that establish. This concludes my presentation um, on environmental influences on crime trends and patterns. Thank you for being present with me and have a great day.